from Fat Quarter Shop, and we are so excited today to have Chelsea and Sherry with us today. They're a mother-daughter duo, and um, I've known Sherry for a really long time, and it's been really nice to see her go from a pattern designer all the way to a mode of fabric designer, since that is like such a big deal. They both have pattern companies. Sherry's pattern company is A Quilting Life. And Chelsea's pattern company is called Chelsea Stratton Designs. And of course, we sell all of their patterns in paper and PDF on Fat Quarter Shop, or they sell them directly on their sites also. They also have a podcast and YouTube channel called A Quilting Life, where they talk to inspirational quilters and designers on all things quilting. So you can find that anywhere you listen to podcasts or YouTube. And I do reference quite a bit their channel when Sherry's doing different things that I'm doing at the same time. So you probably have already checked out their channel. Their new fabric collection is Sincerely Yours. It just arrived and Sherry is hosting a Together Quilt Along that I have been talking about uh, probably since January. So that's gonna start really soon. And um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kinda let them take over and we're gonna start off with a trunk show, then we're gonna do a Q and A and then they have a really big announcement at the end. So, um, and when we're doing the Q and A, I'm gonna be alternating between questions that come in now and then questions that were submitted previously. So welcome Sherry and Chelsea. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Hi. Hi. <laughs> we're yeah, we're so, excited to be here. So tell me about the quilt that's behind you. So behind us is the Moda Blockheads 3 quilt that I did. And I did do all the blocks. And I just used fabrics from all of our different collections up until that time. So it has everything through Happy Days. Awesome. So can you give me um, kind of a little hint to the next Moda Blockheads? <laughs> well, it is in the works. We, we've <laughs> had some emails about that. We've both submitted blocks. So uh, I'm not sure the timetable from Moda, but so that it, it's it's. Yeah. So that'll be awesome because you'll be able to see me sew along and Sherry sew along and maybe even Chelsea this time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so do y'all want to jump into the trunk show and show us your quilts? Yeah. Yep. yep. Let's start the trunk show. We're really excited to show some quilts. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the first quilt is uh, my farmhouse garden quilt. And this is from my Labor of Love quilt book. And this is with fabrics by Lisa Bonjean of Primitive Gatherings. And I love Nine Patches. It was the first block I made as a kid, actually. And uh, I just love how fun this was to put together. And is that a pre-cut friendly quilt? This one I did with a uh, fat uh, fat eighth bundle. Okay, but you could you could use jelly rolls too if you had if you had at least two. Okay, so yeah, awesome. And okay. so I'm gonna let you guys guess who is the model behind the quilts, and we'll see who who can <laughs> who is gonna be able to answer that question first correctly. Oh, uh, that'll be good. <laughs> he's he's the ghost quilt holder. The ghost <laughs> quilt holder. Okay. Okay, so this next quilt coming up is one of mine. It's my Hearts at Home quilt. And this is the second uh, version I made of this. And I wanted to make something a little bit more modern. I originally made it in Walkabout, but I used uh, fabrics from all of our collections, actually up to uh, Balboa. And uh, this one is jelly roll friendly. So you use two jelly rolls and uh, the hearts always do it for me in the center. So this one's a lot of fun to make. <laughs> and speaking of that, do you, um, how do you, like when you have previous collections, how do y'all keep that stored and what do you keep separately, you know, so that you can always have a little piece of a previous collection? Like how do y'all store that? I, I do it by color, actually, and then I actually keep a fat quarter bundle of every collection, but as far as, like, scraps and leftovers, 
uh, I just store them by color. And that's actually really great for me Mm -hmm. because then when I'm diving into a project, it's like, oh, these are all the reds from all of our collections. And it makes it a lot of fun when I'm choosing fabrics for my next quilt. Yeah, that's good. Because I'm sure people will want to know how you store stuff. (laughs) Yeah, I do it a little bit, a tiny bit different. I, um, I keep everything together. And, and I usually have the two previous collections just in bins, my leftovers. And then when I get another collection, then I move those into by color, like Chelsea does. Have you ever... And, but I also... Oh, try, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no. Uh, I also try to keep uh, some small pieces, like half yard pieces, so I can pull them really quick off the shelf and cut from them. Have you ever caught yourself going on Etsy years later and buying more when it runs out (laughs) yes yes I ran out well there was a navy dot from uh, desert bloom yes that we both completely ran out of and I couldn't find it anywhere so we brought it back in happy days yeah oh awesome (laughs) yeah but the suns from clover hollow in yellow I'm out of that and I'm looking for some. <laughs> so. We're sometimes scouring our hardware store in our little town for older prints. So. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. So Vanessa okay. Blunt gets the win. She um, has guessed that it is Billy and he, she, they, she says he is the star. <laughs> oh. They guessed it to you, Billy. And I'm going to shut this uh, shutter. Really okay. Quick, yeah, it's, it's kind of like putting a glare on the quilts. There, it's good. Oh, that, there we go. Perfect. That's yeah. much better. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, Pier 44. I love this one. And this is from uh, my... Su- Wait, no. Sorry. This, <laughs> this is Laguna, and this is also from Labor of Love. And I love log cabins, and this quilt was from my stash. Every, just collections that I had saved for years and years and didn't want to use, you know, those fabrics that you can't bear to use, I, I cut them up and put them in this quilt. So uh, just, just one of my, this is one of my favorite. I love scrappy quilts, so. And is it Jelly Roll and Honey Bun friendly or just Jelly Roll friendly? It would be, it would be just jelly roll friendly okay. because I actually use the Creative Grids ruler and trimmed them down. So, okay. um, but you could, if you want, if you starched and used Honey Bun, you could do it that way too. But, okay. Yeah. Okay. Next. <laughs> <laughs> and then have you, do you, when you keep your scraps of your collections, do you mix it with other designers or do you keep it separate? I don't mix it with other designers. I do. You do? No. <laughs> I keep <laughs> Okay. I keep it all color and you know okay. one of Vanessa Gertzen's lines is around the same color, I keep it in there. <laughs> I do mix uh, a lot of Corey's fabrics seem to yeah. work well with ours. Mm-hmm. So I, I do pull from hers occasionally and Yes. Oh, actually, it's the other way, but that's okay. Yeah. So this next quilt (laughs) is a favorite of mine. It's all American. You may have seen it. Uh, It's uh, been around for a while. This one's a lot of fun because you're using four different uh, blocks in the quilt. So it's kind of fun sometimes when you're making a quilt to switch things up and makes it not so tedious. So, uh, and different levels of difficulty definitely within each block. And I actually remade this in our Happy Days collection using all of the reds, uh, ivories, uh, blues, aqua, grays, and it is fat quarter friendly. So just, oh, definitely one of my favorite quilts I've ever designed. Yes, I love it also. It's beautiful. Oh, thank you. (laughs) Okay. All right. Next quilt. So next. That was quick. They best they guessed Billy pretty quick. They be- they oh, there's Billy several people quick. guessing Billy. Billy after, and they're giving him little heart emojis. Oh, oh they are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. They're giving you heart emojis. <laughs> oh. Okay. okay so. so 
Yeah, so these are from my latest book, uh, Home and Hearth. And this is the Backyard Blooms pillow. And again, I love nine patches. And this pillow is the perfect size for a sham for your bed, or it looks great on a couch too. And I use our Happy Days fabrics for this one. And I did a zipper back on the um, back, covered with a flap, so I have a tutorial for that on YouTube. And then this book also has a, some little sewing notions. This is a, a project bag with uh, curved edges. I had never seen one done with curved edges, and I, I love the curve. So, and then the vinyl in the front. And then inside, I just have, this is a rotary cutter case. Oh, that's so cute. You can stick your so rotary cutter in, and it won't cut anything in your bag. And uh, so love this. And then just, I love hexagons. And so this <laughs> oh, is yes. a hexagon needle book. That's so cute. Did you English so paper wanted, piece it by hand? I did, yeah. 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 So just a, just a few little fun things that I wanted to add to that book. That's awesome. Okay, I think next is going to be one of Chelsea's. You always make the cutest, like, tiny things, <laughs> like little piecing. And... Oh, I love English paper piecing, so. Um, Those were so Wendy would like to know what size blocks were the log cabin blocks that you were showing a couple quilts ago? Oh, I believe those were six inch. Okay. Okay, so this so next quilt is from our Sincerely Yours collection that has shipped to shops. So mm -hmm. Fat Quarter Shop has it. Uh, this is Cross My Heart and a little heart and a cross. I can't give them up, you guys. <laughs> Hearts and all the quilts. But uh, it's Fat Eighth friendly and definitely beginner friendly for this one. And it's great because it uses every single fabric from the collection. So great to pick up a fat eighth bundle and yeah, pair it with, pairs with it nicely, so. <laughs> and I love the Sincerely Yours collection because it's Valentine's Day, but it's not. And there's so many colors and it creates just such a beautiful, you know, so many collections are just red or pink that are Valentine's Day. So this is like the first Valentine's Day collection that I can see really works kind of both ways. Both, you know, with For Valentine's sure. Day and without, and it's got so many colors. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we're excited <laughs> about it. It was fun pulling out just the pinks for the stitch mm -hmm. pink, you know, pinks and reds. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of the prints in it would make great baby quilts. Oh, too. they would. That's a great idea. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so. Thank next. you, Billy. Really. <laughs> I don't know how how those quilts are ending up in the other room, but we'll, well worry about that later. Well, people are asking if you can, and this would probably be a great future video idea if you haven't done it already, is to do a video on how you store all these quilts. Yeah, That's what people are asking I'm, to see. Yeah, and I'm actually getting ready to do inventory. And yeah. Because when I was looking for quilts for this trunk show, there were a couple I couldn't find, and so I'm going to yeah. make a list of exactly where I store everything. Mm -hmm. you got to do a whole blog post on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, one more quilt from my Home and Hearth Quilts book. And this is Backyard Blooms. I, I love Vanessa Gertzen's oh. fabrics. And this one just really spoke to me. Uh, <laughs> so It's my favorite collection of hers. Like. Uh, this is one of her, my favorites. I, I like her new one that's showing, too. Uh, but yeah, I made table runners and all sorts of things with this collection and, and uh, have this. I think this is also a fat quarter quilt. Okay. So. And people are loving that you've added purple to uh, your designs just because um, that's the one color that we get the request for most. And I think it's the one color that is missing in the market. So people are very excited that Sincerely Yours has that purple. Oh, yay. That's good to know. Yeah. Yeah, that is good to know. <laughs> yeah. And that makes me happy because we have it in Seashore Drive that ships in January. So, yes, that's right? true. That's cool. Yeah, that's like a an orchid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. Thanks, nice quilt. <laughs> I, I really can't, though. That folktale collection, I can't quit that collection. Like, I keep sewing with it still. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Billy's arms are going to be so tired after this. <laughs> yeah, for sure. He's going to be like, oh. Um, <laughs> people do want to know the frame that's behind you that's holding the Moda Blockheads quilt, what, what that frame is. I just got it off Amazon a few Amazon, years ago yeah. Okay. To take pictures of my quilts. Yeah. Oh, okay. I could probably oh, find I'm something sorry. similar. It is big. Send you a link <laughs> after, but. Yeah, that's good, Billy. Okay, I feel bad because this quilt is so enormous for him to hold. This is hold. a big quilt. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm going to get started on it. This is Safe Haven. Uh, it so is pretty. intermediate, uh, really confident uh, beginner quilt, just because it uses uh, a different technique while making the blocks. But same, fat eighth friendly, and really shows off every single print in the Sincerely Yours collection. Uh, and I also used, a lot of people ask me, on this one, I used the Bella 200 for the background just to make it a little bit brighter to pop a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, definitely one of my favorite quilts from uh, all of the ones that I designed for this collection. So Awesome. And um, the biggest comment that we're getting the most is um, that they love how Sherry talks about how she organizes her time, life, and sewing on the podcast, and they think that's helpful. So more organization, um, I think, is also what they're wanting. So that's great. Oh, I'm just giving you, you tips. I'm going to load you up, <laughs> yes. load you up with all the video ideas. I don't want it to. <laughs> yeah, we will take them. Uh, yeah, in fact, maybe this is a good time. I have this on my lap. Oh. <laughs> my uh, Quilting Life Planner and Workbook just arrived yesterday. <gasps> and, uh, even if you have a planner that you really love, the workbook aspect. Of learning, so Do, so it's, should that be hitting the stores like in a month, month and a half? Because I haven't gotten our sample, so probably it's a little bit out, right? A little bit hasn't been well, released to the stores yet, right? Yeah, no, they're shipping to the stores now, so you should get it any day. Oh, okay, so, okay. I'll yeah, check on that then. It was, yeah, coming from Seattle, and so I'm probably a little closer than you. Oh, yeah. So yours might have shipped as well. Yeah. Okay, maybe it'll arrive today. I have to look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's spiral bound and it comes shrink wrapped, so it's easy to ship, so. And I'm sure on your channel, you'll do a video and talk about all the pages and how you can use it. Cause I know you did that on the first one and this is like a revised um, edition. So y'all can look yes. forward to that. Yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> That's something I feel like I picked up from my mom at such an early age was she was a list maker and an organizer and that's just something I always ended up doing as well. So uh, I'm always inspired when we're podcasting and she's like, well, this time management helped me. And I'm like, <laughs> oh yes, time management. Like I'm always learning new things from her because she's always reading up on new things. So yeah, I agree. Okay. <laughs> oh, I love this one so yeah. much. It's so okay. Pretty. This one is one of my favorite quilts ever. This is on the cover of the book that I did with Corey Yoder, Sunday Best Quilts. And this is Pier 44. It's actually named after the pier uh, that near where we used to stay when we vacationed with the kids when they were younger at Newport Beach in California. And this is another totally scrappy quilt. And as I got this out yesterday, I just, I used to teach this a lot and it just like reminded me, especially of teaching this quilt in Dallas of 20, summer of 2019 to, uh, there were the Moda, the two Moda retreats. Oh yes. That, yeah. Yeah. So I taught this there and it just brought back all those good memories. And that's traditional piecing, right? No, I actually used, uh, we have both in the book. You can okay. do traditional or, uh, well, actually we have a paper pieced version that you can print out and do just the foundation paper piecing. And also you can use the creative grids ruler. Awesome. So, yeah. And what batting are you using in most of these quilts? We use almost exclusively warm and white. Warm and white, so. okay. And is it like, um, is it 100% cotton or 80-20? I think it's 100% cotton. Okay. It. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to write that down. That's and make what sure. I use for all mine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
He's really going to be tired, guys. Y'all are going <laughs> to have to get him He's some breakfast good... tacos. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll have to make breakfast after this. Yes. Oh. <laughs> He's not going to be able to lift anything at all. <laughs> Well, I do have a funny story. Yesterday, uh, Sherry, Chelsea, and I talked about breakfast tacos. So um, I'm not going to say the company because I don't want to like throw them under the bus. But I was like, oh, that sounds so good. I'm going to have that for lunch. So I ordered it for me. And then I ordered Kevin something different. And when the food delivery came, mine wasn't uh -huh. in there. And I was oh, like, no. the delivery driver stole my tacos. I was, oh, I was, no. I was like so mad. <laughs> Oh, that's the right one. Oh, that would be because when you know that you're going to eat something, you're thinking about it. <laughs> yes, you want it. And I oh think when I was talking to y'all, I was already starving, and then when y'all brought that up, I was like, "Oh my gosh, I gotta have some tacos." <laughs> they stole my breakfast tacos. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. If you could lift it just for a second, a little bit higher, Billy. <laughs> Not that we're asking too much of you or anything. Okay, that's perfect. Uh, this is Afterglow and another Fat Eighth quilt, uh, Fat Eighth Friendly. I don't know why all of my quilts are like Fat Eighth Friendly for this uh, collection. But this one was really cool because, yes, you're using flying geese, simple techniques. Uh, I actually used a block lock for this just personally, but the pattern uh, is written a little bit differently, but mm -hmm. I just wanted to make sure that they were all perfect. And this one's really cool because it gives that ombre effect. And so yeah. you can see kind of in the back, the purples going up into the reds and the pinks and the corals. Mm -hmm. uh, I had always wanted to do something like that. I see that in the modern quilting world a lot where they get that effect of all the different colors. And so this was kind of a fun opportunity for me to do that. And I was really, really happy with it. So this is a great beginner friendly quilt. If anyone wants to do some methodical sewing, that's just easy peasy and a lot of fun with the layout. So And the block lock rulers, just so if anybody doesn't know or hasn't used them before, you make it slightly bigger and then you like slide the ruler on your fabric and then it like locks where your seams are pressed and then you trim around and that's how you get them looking so perfect yeah right. and the top row does have uh, a couple of rows of low volume which is awesome yes yeah, yeah. I love that. yeah and you know that's a great yeah and that's a great question how do y'all define low volume that's one of the questions we get so much and um everyone always has a different answer yeah i feel like if if it's um a tone on tone can be a low volume, but I also feel a, a print where the background really stands out can be a low volume too. Yeah. So I think both of those work for me. What about you? I feel like the same. I like we always tend to have a lot of low volumes in our collection. Anything that to me has that just. <laughs> He needs the story. <laughs> okay, so now we, we saw his face. Now yes. everybody oh has seen his face. <laughs> yeah. We saw it. He must be. He exists, you guys. Oh, maybe he's going to sit on the stool and take oh, a that might be smart. He's... I feel so bad. No, same as my mom. I feel like those both uh, go into the definition of a low volume. We always try to have a large variety of them in our collections. Yeah. And I love them. I love having a fun little bundle of low volumes to go with our collections. Well, I love in the Sincerely Yours, the dot that y'all did this time, it's really big oh, and I yes. love it. I love it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we definitely <laughs> have not really done a print like that before. So it was cool, you know, getting a little bit bigger yeah. scale mm -hmm. for that. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was Because in the quilt, it'll end up looking the same, but not really. So it's kind of cool yeah. to like use a background that's a little bit bigger scale than you normally would. Yes. On the, not. on the last quilt that you showed with the flying geese, what background fabric did you use? So I used the, I actually used the tone on tone, uh, print that we have, which is the large dot, okay. uh, print we were just talking about. But it does go, if someone lo is looking for a solid, uh, Bella Porcelain is probably more accurate, wouldn't you okay. say, for mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Okay. 
<laughs> he's, he's gonna try a new <laughs> a new method. Are you gonna sit or stand? Just sort of kneel. Oh, kneel. This is Billy. Okay. Look at you're so innovative. Yeah. <laughs> so this is my patchwork garden quilt, and this is with our Creekside collection from a few years back. And uh, just I I just love little patchwork. And this quilt was actually inspired by Marion, who does a, a lot of quilting for most of our quilting. I went to her house to pick up quilts one day and she said, you need to do some tiny patchwork. <laughs> and so I went home and I designed this and I sent her the image and I said, is this what you're telling me to do? And she said, yeah, that'll do. So, oh, okay. Uh, this, this quilt was inspired by Marion. So. And you have a fun technique to make it simpler to make. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I have some videos where I show how you can cut strip sets and save quite a bit of time. And, and this is strip pieced, so saves a lot of time. It really went together in just a couple of days, so. And that would also look great in the Seashore Drive that's coming out next year, because it has a lot of different shades of color similar to that. Yes, yeah. oh no, now I might have to remake <laughs> it in that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this one actually was quilted by Val Krieger, though, the, um, probably can't see on the video, but it has some really beautiful feather custom quilting in the setting triangles. So, okay. <laughs> and then, of course, everyone wants to know how Billy is related to you two, so I'm going to let y'all answer. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so Billy is my oldest child, and so Chelsea is child number three, <laughs> so... Uh, they are, uh, Chelsea was born right before Billy started kindergarten. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's, it's a really fun dynamic uh, working together, just being with family, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and um, you're her daughter. I, I didn't realize that people, some people didn't know that. So some of the, oh. like, we literally got that question 20 times, is how are y'all related? And I thought, oh, I thought everybody oh, knew. Yeah, yes, yeah. I was shocked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah, and um, Billy can bring that next quilt in, but Chelsea yeah. and Billy both played basketball in high school, so they kind of had that in common, too. <laughs> Little similarities. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I am really excited about this quilt. This is the Good Hearted Quilt. And it is actually a boxed kit with Moda. So uh, if anyone is looking, I'm sure Fat Quarter Shop might have some. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. And I know that those have shipped, but this one's really cool. It's patchwork, kind of has a scrappy feel with all of the fabrics from Sincerely Yours. And yeah, it just kind of gives that patchwork with the alternating blocks in it. And it's a smaller quilt, which is sometimes nice to mm -hmm. make something a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. uh, perfect for hanging on a ladder, throwing over the couch, uh, hanging on the wall. But this is uh, definitely was a special one for me to make. So it's beautiful. Oh, and I do want to mention it's layer cake friendly, and I the layer cake is one of my favorite pre-cuts right now just because like you know less ironing starting out so <laughs> yeah it's actually my favorite pre-cut and has been for a really? couple of years yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe we should be called the layer cake shop instead of fat quarter shop yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey we're rebranding guys no no no. <laughs> no, no, no 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 yeah just a joke just a joke yeah, yeah just yeah. a joke y'all yeah just a joke okay <laughs> next quilt <laughs> thanks billy yeah, so it's really funny because uh, growing up, Billy was actually such a fun brother because he was into like film stuff. Like he would like make videos with his friends and we would make videos just as siblings. And so I'm like, wow, you could, I could have never foreseen that this would have come full circle and he'd be like doing all of this technical stuff, you know, and just, it's kind of cool looking back, so yeah. Yeah, I've been wanting, like, to bring my boys up here and yes. just, like, oh, see yeah. if any of them have any interest for the future. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So this is probably one of my favorite quilts of all time. And uh, this is gelato. 
And it's really the first medallion quilt that I designed. It's with our Summer Sweet collection, and it was a Motobox kit two years ago, I guess. Mm -hmm. Or um, Yeah. I, I just love this quilt. Uh, some of my favorite little blocks are in there, and I also ended up doing a smaller version of this pattern for people who didn't want to make the whole mm -hmm. uh, large medallion but wanted to. Um, and it incorporates a lot of the different elements in the mini. So, yeah, just, just another favorite quilt of mine. That would be pretty, too, if you uh, did it as a row quilt and took segments oh, of yeah. it and did a row quilt, yeah. like a baby row yes. quilt. That would be cute. Oh, yeah. And I am going to show some. I love row quilts, and I have some that will be uh, showing later. <laughs> so Awesome. Okay. <laughs> so afraid he's gonna slip yeah <laughs> don't jinx him yeah yeah seriously i shouldn't have said that out loud <laughs> um so uh what is a breakfast taco people want to know what a breakfast taco is <laughs> <laughs> okay so like for me i'm very passionate about breakfast tacos actually <laughs> uh me, I do like sausage and potatoes and cheese. We home make them all the time, but I put uh, peppers in mine. Do you really? Red peppers. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And onions. Oh, so it's so good, you guys. <laughs> invest, and scrambled eggs. Yeah, invest in the breakfast tacos. <laughs> yeah, and a medallion quilt. Yes. Um, that last quilt was a medallion quilt. It's where you start in the center and then you build out. Do you have anything to add to that, Sherry? Because someone's asking about a medallion quilt. Um, yeah, no, that's how I would define it. Okay. So, completely, yeah. Okay, so we're moving into some of my newest quilt patterns with our Seashore Drive collection. This one is called Summertime, and this is also fat aid friendly. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, sorry, guys. No, so this one was really fun because when I designed it, I actually initially didn't have the stars in it. And I'm like, no, it's missing something. And I thought, you want to know what? Let's put a star block in it. It's one of my very favorite blocks to make, the sawtooth star. And so, yeah, this is summertime. And we're out of summer, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, and if people want to get really creative in the middle of that star, they could add a heart. Yes, they From could. one of your other <laughs> patterns. <clears throat> yeah, we are not going to quit the hearts, guys. Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Billy. <laughs> so, um, what is it like working as a mother-daughter duo? Like, what are like the pros and cons of that? <laughs> yeah, um, I think there's definitely a lot of pros. I really can't think of any cons. Uh, I love other, this question. Yeah, other than maybe sometimes we get talking about it at family gatherings and everybody else is just like what yeah they're literally like stop like you yeah. guys see each other all, all the, the time. time yeah i yeah. i think the pros it's just i wouldn't have chosen any other person than my mom it really has been such an incredible journey with both of us and we really do get along like there there are times where we're like you know, we have disagreements over, you know, like, oh, but I want that blue fabric to be yes. in the next collection. Well, no, mom, I want the pink. Like, uh, but yeah. we're we good just, at compromise. We, I really we honestly think, are. Yeah. yeah, we really are. If people want the real life answer, yeah. we're good at compromise. I think so. Yeah. Even when we get strike offs, okay, we can keep that one if you let me put this one in. And, you know, yeah. So. Yeah. we've learned to really lean on each other sure uh you know nothing no journey is perfect and so uh we keep it real right <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's a good answer okay this is this is one of my favorite favorite quilts and this has been i keep i probably said that with every one of them she loves them all you guys i love ohio stars and you do i remember when i thought about doing this and putting that ohio star in the center i i just I just loved it, and it's called um, uh, Vintage Charm. So, and I actually did, I was at Quilt Market, and I feel like I saw something really similar, and went back to my hotel room and kind of scribbled it on a piece of paper, and it ended up one of the patterns 
for the next market. You know, they have those antique yes. quilts. Yeah, and, they were so inspired by And it. so yeah. I always kind of go browse through those at market. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, But that's what I like about this one is it really does look like a vintage block, but mm-hmm. you were able to make it more modern while still keeping that traditional aspect to it. Yeah. And the chain sections around the Ohio Star, they're all strip piece, so it goes together really quickly. And it, it's not as complicated as it looks, so. Yeah, and I think the sashing really lets the block shine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so pretty. So, thank you, okay. <laughs> we get that question a lot about the sashing, like when to add sashing, when not. And just like you said, like, Sometimes those blocks just need a little bit of separation and that's all the quilt needs. So for that, sometimes what I'll do if I'm not sure is I'll like open a bolt of Bella or whatever I'm using and just open the bolt and then you can put the, the blocks on it yes. and then yes. you can see oh, like, so and then you can like move them together, move them apart and then you can tell, okay, one and a half is good, no, two, you know, you can kind of measure. That's kind of what right. I've done. Because you yeah. can visually I'm see a mental it. note of this. <laughs> yes. That's so smart. I yeah. have not done that before. Yeah. And you can switch colors, too, that way and see if you want a darker oh, sashing yeah, or a colors. lighter, yeah. too. That's a great idea. Yeah. How old was um, Chelsea when she started quilting? Uh, so the very first time, <laughs> I was 12 because I did a project I was going to make a baby quilt for someone and that was the the first time mom introduced it to me and I did not enjoy it if I'm being honest I didn't I'm going to be totally honest uh but I will say this I love quilting and so I will say my journey really really began uh right after we started designing fabric so I was probably oh man like Twenty-five, yeah, twenty-four, twenty-five. Because yeah. you had patterns and pretty quick. It. You had patterns pretty quick right after y'all had. I mean, yeah. you were like quick with the patterns. Yeah, just yeah, just after a few collections. I think it was I really. Clover Hollow, your first. It was Clover Hollow, and I remember I just I remember my very <clears throat> first market. Vanessa Gertzen asked me, "Are you going to quilts?" And I said, "Oh, you know, I don't know." <laughs> And I was truly inspired that first market and I couldn't believe the creativity. And I think that's what sparked it is. I wanted more creativity and now I'm obsessed guys. Like yeah, you can't stop. I do. <laughs> well, yeah, every, you can't stop. every now and then I'll get an email. Oh, I'm adding this pattern. Like yeah. you'll add patterns <laughs> later. So right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that's always good. No, she, she's hooked. I'm sure. hooked. <laughs> I did also, just a really quick story, I tried bribing her in high school. Yeah. There was a quilting class at our high school out here, and I tried bribing her to take it and her sister, and neither one of them would take me up yeah. on it. So, uh, I think I was so involved yeah. in sports, like that was kind of what I was really, really into, and uh, yeah. So. <laughs> Seasons, yeah. different seasons. Mom. Yeah. I, I better get to the quilt behind us for <laughs> Billy. <laughs> this is Starlight, and it's another one of the quilts from Summer Sweet. And I love this one. I, I have seen it in all different color combinations. And I, it's a, such a fun block that even just one block makes a great table topper or pillow. Uh, just I, I just love stars, too, and love. She does. Love doing the multicolor stars in the center. So. Yeah, I love that one. That one looks a little, I would say, intermediate to advanced. Yeah. 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 From all of the ones you've just shown, pick a favorite. Favorite pattern. Oh, wow. <clears throat> Hearts at Home. Just because yeah. it was like, it's timeless. I see so many people making that one that it just makes, it makes me smile. <laughs> Probably gelato for me. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I just got that one back. I had sent it to a oh. friend in Virginia to mm-hmm. have at her shop. And she had it when the pandemic started. And so I didn't want to ask her for it back because I knew she probably hadn't had a chance to sell the fabric. So right. She kept it for a while and I just got it back. So. I made him turn it around, but it didn't really matter because it's log cabin. Yeah, it's log cabin. 
it matters to me, guys. Yeah. Uh, this is another Seashore Drive quilt. And it's, oh man, it's fatty friendly, you guys. I just love them. Uh, this is Morning Walk. And kind of inspired by, I feel like when I'm designing quilts, I'm always inspired by something. Uh, I will try to walk my kids to the bus stop every morning. But yeah, I love log cabins. Like if I had to choose, I would say log cabin is my favorite quilt block. And I love making them in all different sizes. And so this was just kind of, it's a traditional log cabin block, but just kind of a twist on it. So, yeah. And I love how it, it kind of makes bows with the little, yes. with the, yeah. the, um, the little sashing corner po or the cornerstone really yes. kind of yeah. some, it will make it also look like a bow tie. Yeah. yeah it's kind of like a cool effect mm -hmm. that the quilt has. Yeah. It's interesting that as designers, I think sometimes people don't realize like where we get our inspiration. And I get my inspiration a lot from flooring. So, um, and like yes. you just said, from walking your kids to school. So Sherry, what would you say? Um, yeah, I would say flooring as well. <laughs> we actually had a, a bathroom disaster at the beginning of the year. And it was crazy. Oh, uh, but it, it was, it's good now because we got to redo our math, master bath. And I had so much fun at the tile store taking yes. pictures of all those <laughs> tiles. Yes. So, uh, yeah, I found some on my phone the other day and I thought, oh, I need to put these into quilts. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, I'll say that every now and then. Oh, that would make a pretty quilt. My kids just look at me and they're like, can you stop working? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm just talking. I'm just making conversation with myself. <laughs> right. Right. Making a mental note. Like, yeah. yeah, they don't understand. They don't. Yeah. yeah. So okay, so this next quilt has a lot of significance to it. Uh, I love hexagons and English paper piecing, and I love uh, scrappy quilts. This just combines everything, and it has. You might not be able to really see from here, but each flower is sewn onto a four patch of low volume prints. And uh, this pattern is called Flowers for Emma because my grandmother's grandma was Emma. Aww. And she was the first quilter that we know of in our family. And she had started one of these quilts and never finished it. And so I called oh. it Flowers for Emma after her. Uh, and when my quilter Val was quilting this, she quilted my name in it and my grandma's name who taught me to quilt and she quilted Emma's name in it too. And how hard was so. the scallop to do on the binding? Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, this was the first scallop quilt I ever made and it was not hard. I used the, uh, the, the quilt in a day scallop template. Okay. And just followed the instructions and, <laughs> and, and it worked and, uh, I, my quilter Val, I, I called her. I said, "This is the first time I'm doing this," and she said, "Yep, you're doing fine." And <laughs> uh, she gave me a few tips on binding, and because uh, you need to use a bias binding when you're doing mm -hmm. scallops, so. it's really yeah. pretty. So, thank you. And someone is asking if it's beginner friendly that quilt. I honestly think. You know, the four patches are very simple for the background. And if you can do the English paper piecing, then yes, because you don't have, I hand applique mine, but you don't have to. You could machine yeah. stitch those on too. Mm -hmm. So honestly, it is pretty beginner friendly. So It makes it really nice probably when you're doing the final layout because after you have them on four patches, it's just simple yeah. traditional piecing. It's, so. Yeah, very simple piecing. Oh, speaking oh, of row quilts. Yeah, row quilts. Okay, I love <coughs> row quilts. <laughs> yeah. So this is Beach House, and this is with our Happy Days collection. And just some of my favorite blocks, stars and houses and churn dashes and those grandmother's flower garden blocks. Uh, and it's the patchwork. same churn dash from the medallion quilt. It is the same churn dash from the medallion quilt. I just, oh. I just couldn't get away from that. And then like Chelsea, I really love log cabins. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So, yeah. So that has a mix of a lot of the quilts we've seen because it's got the nine patch, it's got the stars, yeah, yeah and then even the little hexagon. So it's a kind of a mix of all. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think this is just a fun kind of skill builder quilt too. You can uh, challenge yourself to learn different different skills with each of the blocks. Yeah, and we have a great comment from SR. She said to you guys that her 14-year-old is making the flower quilt. She loves English oh. paper piecing and she watched oh she watched your tutorial and started it herself and her name is Emma. Oh, oh my goodness. So fun. Oh, You're Emma. Good, <laughs> I know Emma. Yeah, we'll have to say hi to Emma. Yeah. Hi, oh, Emma. Hi, Emma. That is, that's so fun to hear. And oh, we have goodness. some people asking, you know, we know Chelsea quilts. They're wanting to know if any of Sherry's other kids uh, quilt or sew. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, a few years <clears throat> back, I wanted to give both of my girls a sewing machine for Christmas. And I didn't think Chelsea would ever quilt. And I, so I actually gave my older daughter kind of the better sewing yes. machine. <laughs> and now I'm like, what? <laughs> and and uh, so I gave them both Janome's, but my older daughter, I gave my previous machine, which had all the bells and whistles. And Chelsea, I gave a new Janome. So I felt like it was kind of fair, but I just, I didn't think Chelsea would, would quilt. And then she's the one that ended up quilting. Yeah, it wasn't looking <laughs> promising at first, so. but you know. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, no other quilters. And a lot that of, perfect, thus far. But... Okay, great, I can't wait to see this one. <sighs> okay, I love this one. This is Beachfront and it's from our Seashore Drive collection. And uh, it uses charm squares and actually mini, uh, mini charms as well. Uh, I love a nine patch and I knew I wanted to do it with that aqua gingham print in the collection. I wanted to do that throughout with a nine patch and just add simple squares and sometimes just simple piecing squares is so refreshing. It's, uh, I love this one. Yeah, I call it like therapy. Doing something just super simple, yes. you get a beautiful, it just kind of calms you a little bit. Yes, yeah. Yes, and I love that okay. the collection, yeah, Billy, you can go. <laughs> I love that this collection <laughs> offers that just because going to the beach every year as a family, uh, the ocean is just kind of a special place for our family and really serene. And when designing the collection, we really wanted the fabrics to give that off as well. So, and where, beginner friendly too. Where is where is Billy putting all these quilts? I don't really know. Maybe on my kitchen table or the I'm couch in the, the other couch. room. I'm gonna guess the couch. Y'all should take a right. photo yeah. after the video yes. and oh, post we'll it on social media after. because that's what everybody's <laughs> yes. wanting to know. Like, where is he going? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We will get some photos. Okay, and one more grandmother's oh flower God. garden. I, you can tell I love grandmother's oh, yes. flower garden. And this one I thought with churn dashes. Uh, so this is called Sweet, and I also made a Christmas version of this, oh, yes. which so is pretty. really a lot of fun. Uh, I just love this block, and, and I guess maybe I'm a little bit lazy. I don't want to put them together with hexagons, so I'm constantly looking for ways to use them in quilts that don't require you know, a jillion hexagons. So. Well, I also feel like as designers, we have a look that we like, and when we design, we kind of stay within that look. And I don't think that's being lazy. I think that's just doing what you love. And I mean, that's what you girls have done. It's like, you're creating fabric. You love that. You're creating patterns. You love that. And I think it's okay to do the same blocks in different ways. Because yeah. I do it all the time. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. I, yeah, we stick yeah. like, Kind of what we're familiar with. So. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Billy. Thank you. <laughs> so, how do you balance everything? Like doing the podcast, sewing, designing fabrics. Um, like, I'm not sure if you guys have outside jobs y'all want to talk about, but like, do you have a set schedule? And how do you like manage all of that time? Yeah, we've been. Um, you, we've been. When we started, I feel like we weren't as intentional with that, but we've really 
become better at doing that. And in fact, uh, Billy actually lives in Las Vegas an hour away. And we've now got it to where he comes out about twice a month. And we just work really hard those days. And we tape podcast episodes, sometimes multiple ones. And uh, we film videos when he's out. Mm -hmm. And uh, then that next week, we kind of have, you know, the week off just to do our sewing. And uh, so we're getting better at kind of organizing that. And I also quit, I was teaching college English, English 101 and 102. Um, and spring semester 2020 was my final semester. I just, I couldn't juggle that with this anymore. So, and do, yeah, you, do you have set hours or is it just Wait. all the time yeah. working? Yeah, I've really, I, before it was all the time working and I didn't realize it, I guess. And uh, so I've been really good now about having an intentional stop time. It, it was really good last spring. My youngest son graduated from college and he was living here with us for a few months while he was job hunting. And he would come in my office every day at five o'clock and say, Mom, you're done. You know, <laughs> you're done. And it was so good for me. And I ever said, you know, he, he did get a job and move out. But <laughs> I've kept that five o'clock. I'm done, you know. <laughs> so, uh, that, and I don't know what, how you with yeah, the kids. Yeah, I mean, timing is everything. I'm going to say that when this, just real quick, when this journey started, uh, I had literally just had a baby. But uh, I just feel like even last year, I homeschooled my kids and and worked and I had never been busier but it was it, it worked out it just worked out I think time managing my time yeah. I would do homeschool in the morning and work for a few hours in the afternoon and late into the night sometimes after they were asleep uh, but now my two oldest are in school and I just have one at home and uh, we figure it out I just try to be really mindful of my time that I have and then present when my kids are home so yeah. We balance it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if y'all want to see pictures of um, Chelsea's kids, she always puts them on social media, but not always, yeah. but there's a lot of pictures out there if y'all want to see. Sometimes. Yeah. They're yeah. a huge part of it. We're, we have learned to be a team. Yeah. So. Very cute. Okay. This is, I guess this is my first uh, seashore drive yeah. that we've shown today, but this is al fresco and, uh, really named because I really love eating outdoors <laughs> and in southern Nevada it's too hot yeah, about seven hot. months of the year to do that so um, yeah and I also I love this block and I, the same thing I love combining you know one size of the block with another size of the block and, and just this is probably uh, you know I just love the colors in this collection it, it will be available in January and uh, yeah, this is probably one of my favorite collections. So awesome. The purple is a fun shade. So. Yeah, yeah. And is your big block, is that 12 inches? Um, I think so. Let me, uh, I think. It's okay, people can, <laughs> yeah. people can order. It looks 12 Yeah, to me. people can order yeah. the pattern to figure it out. So yeah, thank you, Billy. I did a scrappy binding on that one too. I, I, that probably doesn't show up in the. Yeah, one of the uh, questions film. that people would like y'all to answer is like, is there a visual rule between how you pick your binding color versus your border and your backing? Or do you just pick what you like? Yeah, I always I always think of the binding as the frame of the quilt. Um, but I, I generally try to use one of the colors, if there's a border, I generally try to use one of the colors from that border in the binding. And if there isn't a border, um, just a darker or, or I love scrappy bindings. Those look great when there's just a white around the edge. Uh, yeah, you do a lot of colored borders and that like scares me so much. I don't know why. <laughs> I really like to add space around the quilt and then finish with a really bright binding. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you do really well with the uh, so. the colored border. So, yeah. well, I remember when I started, I used to whatever the outer border was, 
was the binding because yeah. it was like so overwhelming that I couldn't. Yeah, yeah. It was like I, I became. It's like I froze. I didn't want to make the decision. Right. Yeah, that probably yeah. made it easier. Like, mm-hmm. okay, I just know. Like, <laughs> and that always works. So it, that's a really yeah. safe way to go, mm-hmm. for sure. I love this quilt. I love this quilt. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. So the, yeah, I'm sorry. Billy's like it's heavy. This is Magnolia. It's fat quarter friendly. It's uh, made using our Seashore Drive collection, shipping in January 2022. A uh, bigger block quilt. It's a bigger quilt, and uh, I love this one so much. It's a blast to make. Uh, it is not difficult to piece. I would say beginner, confident beginner, uh, but really shows off all of those prints in the collection. And I think you're good. Uh, yeah, you're good. You're <laughs> it's good. a big quilt. And but then, yeah. mom, <clears throat> mom told me she's like. I need to make that in red and greens, uh, alternating. And now it's like yeah. all I can think about. And so I brought her the pattern. Yes, I'm and gonna make it. I'm like, oh my goodness, I have to go mock that up in EQ or something right now. Like, <laughs> and so. and that would be really pretty if if on those cornerstones, if you just used one color, because then you would have stars, yes. and then you would have nine patches. Yes. So you could even play with the colors in that one to to make yeah. it a little bit different. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and I kind of want to do just one block as like a mini or something. Or... You can fold that in half yeah. and just show half of it. This next one is my biggest quilt, so oh. I'm telling Billy he can fold it in half if he wants. <laughs> yes, yes, Billy, that's good. Will that make it easier? <clears throat> this is uh, more churn dash blocks. I, I love churn dashes. Uh, so this is lattice and the front porch. Uh, in the front porch, yes. And I actually redid this when we came out with our Balboa collection. And uh, my quilter, Marion, did a version just with the gray yes. prints. And it turned out really beautiful as well. So, um, and there's, I have a mini pad, a mini lattice as well. So, if you like little churn dashes, it makes a great <laughs> pillow or table topper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so cute. Who doesn't love little of yes. everything, Mom? Yeah. <laughs> and you can see with your quilts, your fabric, it works well with cream, but it also works well with white. So, yeah. um, like your, because sometimes there's fabric collections, some designers, you can only use cream or you can only right. use white. And I feel like y'all's is like, you can do either. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we've done that before where Chelsea has done some of her quilts with Bella 200. Yeah. And I did the same fabrics with uh, Bella Ivory, and they both worked. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. I actually do that with every collection now. I'll do, with my set of patterns, I'll do one and the other just to show that there's different variations. And are y'all going to are y'all gonna start using the Beyond Bella when it comes in? Oh, isn't that so yes. pretty? I like was I love in love with it. Oh. I, oh, you know, we get so to pretty. see images, you know, slightly before the fabric comes, but we never saw those images. And when the sales rep came, I was like, "Wait, where has this been all my life? <laughs> like, I knew yes. this now." <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh well, <clears throat> we've got a little quilt this time, so this is good for Billy. And another row quilt. Another row quilt. <laughs> And uh, this is family farm. Uh, my family on my mom's side, they were farmers in Iowa. And so I just kind of did this one. Uh, and you can see, uh, again, I love flying geese and we've got some Ohio stars in there. Uh, they were in, my family was in Ohio before they went to Iowa. And so this is just kind of a little fun tribute. Homage to them. Yeah. <laughs> So, and I, I like uh, this size quilt because I like to decorate my home with quilts on the walls and some of the bigger quilts are just too big. So mm-hmm. uh, I do quite a few wall hanging size. And Chelsea talked about her method for making flying geese. What would be a method you like for making flying geese? Do you do them the traditional way or? Oh, I love the block lock. And okay. Especially with those small flying geese, I'm going to going to use the block lock for sure so yeah and that's what I love about quilting is everybody comes up with their own way to yeah you know make their quilts look unique and you would never know the difference right yeah (laughs) 
I think I just have one more. Yeah, I think I have. Oh, and one more of Chelsea's. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yay, perfect for fall. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, I know, okay. I know which one's coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is Hey Pumpkin, and it uh, is really, it's fat quarter friendly, and I actually used all of the creams and oranges, grays, charcoals from our Summer Sweet collection. And uh, some people might notice this. It was originally in American Patchwork and Quilting um, on the cover. Uh, but I made some modifications to it and made it into a fun pattern for everyone. So it's updated and brand new and uh, perfect for October. And so it's awesome. Yeah. I love it. And I love how, love it, the, yeah, yeah. how it doesn't have a border. <laughs> some quilts don't yeah. need yes. a border. Yeah. 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 And those fall leaves in the pumpkin, I think, are so cute. So. Yes. Yeah, I love that It was one. so fun. With this collection, we both made fall quilts using just those colors. And I don't feel like we really told each other until we were yeah. both done. And uh, so, yeah, it was, it was fun. And they that, were different. It they were cool. different. Yeah. And, but it was fun that we both kind of went down that avenue with those fabrics. Yeah. I think Billy's, I've got one more quilt, right, Billy? Okay, so this is my last quilt. And... Yeah. He's like, yes, this is the last one. <laughs> so there's a little story to this one. Uh, my grandmother, shortly before she passed away, it might have been the last time I saw her before she passed away, uh, we were getting ready to leave, and she came out to the car with this quilt. In a, It was in terrible, terrible shape, and it was uh, just frayed and coming apart. And, but this was the block design and it, it was made by Emma. And she said, I know this quilt, nobody else will want it in the family. I'm just gonna give it to you. I know it's in terrible shape, but it was, it was kind of like she was telling me to remake it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I her, her version, and I still have it, but it is in very bad shape. The blocks were quite a bit smaller and hand pieced, but I was able to, you know, use our modern tools, and this is actually a charm pack pattern. So you can do this with a charm pack or a layer cake if you want. Uh, and I used some great tools to to do this. I ended up using the Circle Savvy ruler, also. Uh, but this is Mahalo, and uh, just one of my favorite quilts. And this is in our Desert Bloom collection. Yeah. So feels so long ago. Yeah. <laughs> I, the first version I made was in Denise Schmidt Fabrics, and that was published in American Patchwork and Quilting. I remember that. So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. It's beautiful. Yeah, so Thanks, if people don't Billy. know, when you, when you submit a design to a magazine, you can publish it later. They give you like a timeline. So like a year later or six months later, you can republish it. So if you guys are right. just curious about that, that's one thing that people might not know. Yes, yeah. Yeah, so I get for our little trunk show. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about like some of your favorite techniques or favorite tools. You know, we talked about the block lock rulers. Is there something else that you tend to use over and over a lot in your sewing room? Yeah, I, I use Doug Lico's uh, mini simple folded corners ruler. Mm -hmm. I, I use the smaller one more. Uh, I'm also now a convert to triangle paper. Yeah, <laughs> I feel. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I love the. Um, I have actually a basket that has all my triangles in a roll in there, and uh, I just I love triangle paper. I, I d it took me a while to get kind of hooked on it, but if you're if you're doing, I feel like if you're doing more than eight. Yeah. Out of the same fabric, for sure, you have to be using that triangle paper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I love both of those things as well. Uh, but one of my favorite things that I can't stop talking about ever is the diagonal seam tape. Uh, yes. Okay. So, love that. <laughs> I think that's by Cl Cluck Cluck Sew. So. Yes, yes, Allison. Yeah. 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 I like that too. Yeah. I usually keep a little piece just on my machine all the time. Mm -hmm. So, 
if there's something that really quick, it saves me from drawing all those diagonal yes. lines. Yes. And tell everybody kind of what that is and how you use it, because I'm sure people, some people haven't heard of that before. Yeah, so it's this tape and uh, yeah, you just line it up on your sewing machine and it gives you a perfect uh, quarter inch seam uh, line to follow. And then also um, it's, I don't know, it's just, is that like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. perfect. <laughs> it has three lines. So. Yes, three lines. Yeah. yeah. But it just saves me so much time. So I used to stay up and just like draw lines all the time. And that is definitely a way you can do it. But with young kids, I was always looking for ways like mm -hmm. to save time. And before I like tried to convince myself, oh, I, I, I don't mind drawing the lines. <laughs> I do. Yeah. I mind. So it's just really quick, easy peasy. What thread color do you use mostly when you're piecing? Oh, it's Arafil. It's 2026. Um, 2026. It's kind of a creamy color. Yeah. yeah, it's not too white or too cream. There might be one a little bit brighter I use too. Okay. Yeah, sometimes I'll use 2000 if I'm using darker fabrics. So, well, we I know a lot of people use gray, but I've never found yeah. the right gray. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, I like sticking with a really creamy, yeah. or white, neutral. If y'all had to pick three Bella solids each um, that are your favorites and not overlap, what would y'all pick? Like you, oh you get goodness. like we have to take you each get to pick one and then the next and then the next and the next so that somebody can okay. like nobody gets all the good ones. Oh, okay. So uh, you get to pick one first. Like, oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, the well i mean i think i have to choose a background i think the new bella porcelain is my favorite for it's right in between ivory and bella 200. so i like a background that's a little bit warmer mm -hmm. um so i'm gonna choose that one first <laughs> okay i'm gonna go with american blue first I oh okay shade of blue <laughs> um i am going to go with our Bella Geranium. Uh, I don't know what number it is. What color is, is that? Is it purple? It's, um, no, it's a red. Oh, okay. And it's like our staple red that we use in all okay. of our collections. And it's like warm enough, I still on that warm side. So not a traditional red, but I love it. I love it. Okay, since she didn't take it, I'm going to say Bella 200 because I feel like it's just a a staple to have in my in my room mm -hmm. so yeah um oh my goodness okay uh the citrine um uh, yes i'm gonna go with the citrine just because we first introduced that in desert bloom and we've recently brought it back and i think it's just such a different color um I like different. I like yes, and that's good. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I, I'm i trying to think of the names for uh, the colors. I know. But, uh, there was one more I was going to choose. But well, I really it. love the, the, dark, <laughs> the darker blue in uh, Seashore Drive. Do you know what that is called? Oh, my goodness. The oh, the teal. The teal is so good. Is it, is it teal? It's teal. Okay, so Bella teal. Yeah. Okay. okay. The teal is good in the right context. Like, if you have just, it's honestly, I want to do it for a fall. I want to bring the teal into a fall collection in the future. Like, yeah. I'm already thinking of, like, new fabric <laughs> collections I want to design right now for yeah. some reason. Uh, that one's a good one. But there's, is it ruby ice or spray? I like those. So aqua's really, really bright for me. Um, but those are a bit softer. Love those. I think those are like the perfect little aqua shade that is not so striking. Yeah. Um, it's a bit softer that we have in Seashore Drive. So yeah, yeah. Those are good colors. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that I thought that y'all were gonna say 98, 97, and 200. So I only guessed two of them. <laughs> <laughs> I only oh. guessed two correctly. Uh -huh. Hey, you did good. Yeah. <laughs> Um, is there like any type of new techniques y'all have learned recently that um, 
have helped y'all in quilting? Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm excited to try. Uh, I, I would just, I guess, really just kind of coming over to the half square triangle paper side I has really helped. I, I feel like when I was at that Dallas retreat, mm -hmm. I was making the starlight quilt that we showed today and I wasn't using triangle paper and I was kind of sitting around in the evening with some of the other designers and they were all kind of like, Sherry, why aren't you using triangle paper? <laughs> and I was like, I don't use triangle paper, do you? And they all, every single one of them, you know, like, yeah, Lynn Hagmeyer was there <laughs> and um, Lisa Bonjean and, and Barb and Mary. And, and they're all like, what are you doing? <laughs> I was drying the lines, you know? <laughs> so, uh, so I did an experiment and I, I timed it. I made 24 drying the lines start to finish and I made 24 with triangle paper and triangle paper won. So. It won. <laughs> oh wow! So do you use triangle paper for the corners of your saw sawtooth stars, or? Uh, I sometimes do. Uh, if I'm not using flying geese, you know, a block lock for the flying geese. So mm -hmm. if I'm doing scrappy and I'm doing all half square triangles, then yeah. And I keep uh, extra half square triangles. I keep it with the paper until I'm ready to use it, and I just have a big bin. So when I'm doing a scrappy quilt, I can just pull out a bunch of those. That's smart. Tear the paper off and then use them. So. That's a good idea. So. What about you? Um, I feel like I stick with what I know. Um, but I will say, and people keep asking me, uh, my goal this year was to try curved piecing. So I'm just going to say I'm <laughs> that technique is something I'm hoping I've got a few more months to, to try. And Vanessa Gertzen has actually, she's given me a couple of her patterns that are curved. And she's like, Chelsea, it's not that hard. Like you can do it. And yeah, so I'm gonna go with, I yeah, I stick with what I'm really familiar with, but. And kind of with open. that question yeah. is, we talked a lot about the blocks you do like. Are there blocks that you're just like too scared to try or you just really get bad results and don't ever want to do them again? Yeah, I feel like I, I'm i terrified of a couple of things. I mean, curved piecing, I think that's the first one that I'm like, okay, I don't think I'm scared to try that one. but. English paper piecing, like I, that one I like tend to stay away from. Uh, I, I don't love walking into the unknown, but <laughs> uh, yeah. I, w I would say uh, foundation paper piecing to me is kind of like a necessary evil. Okay. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, I feel like there's times when I just have to use it, but I don't love it. Honestly, I don't love that. Uh, but yeah, I use it when I have to, and and I can do it, and I love those add an eighth rulers mm -hmm. and, uh, that help with that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have the tools, and uh, but yeah, I, that's probably my least favorite, I guess. From um, can y'all each pick one of like your favorite collection that y'all design, and then your favorite collection from another designer? Ooh. Uh, Sincerely yours, just because it was so uh, out of the box for us, it was different. We uh, did something that we really believed in and wasn't sure how it would be received, and that's hands down my favorite, because it stretched my creativity a little bit. So um, that's the one of ours that okay. I find. Yeah, and I feel like Sincerely Yours has kind of a cool story. Chelsea had been working on it for quite a while, and I was actually out of town at a quilting retreat and she had been working on it while I was gone and she texted me some images and uh, she's like, should we submit this? And I was just like, yes, <laughs> you know? And uh, so that was really fun. That was- Yeah, I think Lisa Alexander was there with you. Yeah, Lisa was with me. I think me. she saw it. Too. Yeah, and I showed it to Lisa and I'm like, should we submit this? <laughs> And she said yes. Just send it. Yeah. So, uh, okay, so my favorite out of all of our collections, 
I, you know, I thought of that when I was pulling out these quilts. Uh, it might be Clover Hollow or, since, or Seashore Drive. I don't know. Uh, I guess Seashore Drive if I just have to pick one. Desert Bloom would be my Desert second. Desert Bloom just is because. right in there, too. Yeah. Uh, but for another fabric designer, uh, I love Folktale by Vanessa Gertzen of Lola Boutique. Uh, I still continue to sew with it. I just designed a new pattern in it. I can't, I can't quit that one, so. <laughs> oh, and that's really hard, too. Uh, Folktale is up there, but I feel like... Uh, I get every Minnick and Simpson collection that oh, there is. So pretty. I just love uh, doing pink, red, white, and blue quilts, and so uh, I just I keep all her fabric together by itself, all the scraps from all the quilts I make with her fabrics. So uh, yeah, and her most recent one I can't think what it's called, but I feel like it it might be called Newport. It's is that so the pretty. one that she just mm-hmm. showed? I really love that one. Yeah. And can y'all talk a little bit about your design process for designing fabrics? You know, how does that, who does what, what kind of programs do you use or how do y'all kind of do that together jointly? Yeah. Yeah. So I, oh, sorry. Oh, I was just going to say it kind of starts with Chelsea sketching. Yeah. Yeah, So I primarily, I would say 90% of the drawings I hand draw uh, on sketchbook paper And then I move those images into Adobe Illustrator. I get asked that a lot too. Uh, Some people like Photoshop. Uh, uh, There's, oh shoot, there's another program. Procreate, a lot of people like that. But I just really primarily love Illustrator. And then I'm able to really go in and manipulate and really perfect those designs in there. Uh, But it also starts with color like we'll be like oh we really wanted to add that like with the purples we're like Mm -hmm. let's do some purple like let's do this shade oh and we'll make notes like let's use this color in the next collection or bring this color from another collection back but you know all design but uh yeah color is huge we talk about that a lot together and then i'll actually make a little like pdf type of uh thing for my mom and we'll go over it and she has great input. She's uh, been quilting a very long time and it's really helped foster uh, and help me grow in my design process. Like when I first started, I was like, small scale, large scale, what's like, you know, like you need a really great balance of everything. And so being a team, it just helps a lot to have each other. Yeah, I, I feel like it's a lot easier now that Chelsea quilts. Oh, because totally. in the beginning collections, you know, I was always kind of like, well, we need a dot, we need a large scale, we need a small we scale. We need a stripe. We and need... yeah, and so she didn't get that in the early days, but once she started quilting, then I I never had to say that anymore. She yeah. she got that part of it and uh, yeah. So well, yeah, much easier now that she quilts. Yeah. And as a fabric buyer, I can tell for sure when they show a line, I can tell if they quilt or not. Like it's like, yeah. <laughs> okay, this person doesn't quill. <laughs> They're missing a lot of the essentials. Um, yeah. A lot of designers stay within the, the same color family. So can you talk about, like, your color family? What keeps you in there? I mean, obviously, Sincerely Yours is a little bit outside the color family, but a little bit about that. So we did that for a long time. We stayed really, really close within the same color family. And... Once we designed Summer Sweet, that really started to change. We went from Summer Sweet to Balboa Mm -hmm. to Happy Days, bringing in some bolder, brighter colors, Mm -hmm. and then straight into Sincerely Yours. And and then Seashore Drive was just a really brighter, we kind of envisioned a brighter Balboa that was a little bit more uh, striking, but yet soft and serene. But I would say, like, we actually have a list. We keep a list of all of the... (laughs) the Bellas that we use in our collections and it's long now, but I feel like it, like I can't go without a Navy in a collection or a charcoal in a collection, you know, like I have to have something contrasting. And so we do tend to stick within those boundaries. 
I feel like we're more willing to jump the boundaries now, now. though. I feel like, yeah, you know, it, it's kind of become really fun to think about, oh, well, uh, you know, because we're thinking about doing a fall collection, and uh, so we've been just kind of tossing ideas back and forth about what that's going to look like, and uh, well, speak yeah. yeah like speaking that. of that, we th one of the number one questions we also got is they want to know if you're doing a Christmas, Halloween, or fabric patriotic, like a patriotic fabric collection, and if so, when? Um, oh, we talk about that we, all the time, and that's actually one of the number one questions we get is when are you doing a Christmas line? Yes, I think, uh -huh. uh, we would absolutely love to do that. Like. Yeah. Now that we've done Sincerely Yours, it just really has opened up uh, us to wanting to do more. And I even told mom too, uh, when I made Hay Pumpkin, using all of the oranges and creams and charcoals and light grays from Summer Sweet, I'm like, oh, we need to do like a Halloween inspired slash fall line. Like, so there's just so many ways you could do that. You could stick with, you know, just the creams and the grays, or you could do something that you add a teal and a green and you know kind of what Corey Yoder has done but we talk about it all the time so hopefully in the future yes. everyone uh yeah we would love to so I'm always designing and drawing new things and yeah I yeah. feel like a Christmas collection is high on our list and maybe this is a good time to kind of spill the beans should we yes. do that now yeah yes <laughs> so we no Christmas collection to announce, but we did do a Christmas book together, and it will be available next late in the spring, May or June. So it was that will be with Martin Gale. Yeah, so, we're yeah. really excited about it, and we just saw uh, some of the images from it, and it's really beautiful. Yeah. so we're excited. We're super happy with the photography, and we we did uh, some recipes. And we did food photography for the first yeah. time. <laughs> so it was a little change for us. Yes. <laughs> so did y'all do a lot of the photography for the book or did y'all like half just, and half? No, we just did the food photography. <laughs> just the food. <laughs> so, yeah. It was a really great day. We just like totally took all these pictures and then we ate so much food. So yeah. <laughs> we got some of our favorite Christmas foods early. Yeah. And now I'm starting to think we need Christmas desserts all year round, so. <laughs> yes. So Sherry, can you talk about your Together Quilt Along that you're starting soon, and then talk about, you know, the free block of the month you do every year, and then kind of give me, I really want to see a hint for next year since I always sew those. Talk a little bit about that. Oh, oh yeah. So we're really excited that Together Quilt Along is going to start next Tuesday. We, uh, delayed it but so it's going to go a little bit faster so Tuesday and then Friday and then the next week I think there will be three blocks Monday Wednesday Friday so uh, super excited that we've got five videos so you can see exactly how to make all the different blocks and I also have a wall hanging uh, when I was filming the videos I ended up with all these extra blocks from the step outs and I thought this would make a great wall hanging. And in fact, Kimberly, I'll send you that today. Okay. Uh, I have a little PDF okay. that everyone will be able to get. And uh, you'll you'll still need the pattern, but it just tells you what to do to make the wall hanging. And oh, that'll be, be cute. Great for yeah, yeah, great for Valentine's Day. Uh, and you so. had enough left over from your kit or you're just from your scraps? Um, uh, for the block, for the heart blocks that I used, I did have enough leftovers. I had to add a little bit for the sashing. Okay. Uh, so, but we've got fabric requirements. For okay, that. awesome. So, yeah. And then the block of the month, I just actually finished up mine uh, for 2021. I did the six inch size in Joanna Figueroa Christmas fabrics, and then I did my 12 inch blocks with our Happy Days. And super excited how those both turned out. Uh, and yes, I do have 2022s in my head, and it is going to involve uh, one of my favorite blocks. Um, it's There's going to be a, an outer block and an inner block, and the outer blocks will all be the same, and then the centers will be different. And so That'll be awesome. Uh, so Chelsea, are you going to sew along too? 
I think I should. Yeah. <laughs> that was kind of one of my goals this year too, was to really jump into a sew along and yeah, I think it would be good for me next year. Actually, my, my youngest goes to school too. So I'm going to have a lot more time on my hands. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you think it's easier to design your fabric collections or do you think it's easier to design fabric? Like, Patterns. Oh, patterns. Yeah. What do oh, you think? I say fabric for me just oh, because okay. I, I just feel like I've been, I, I've always been drawing like all the time. So that's like a happy place for me. Mm -hmm. And then I, but I love, I love doing both, but for yeah. me, designing the fabric is probably easier. I think, uh, it's probably just, well, for me, because she does so much more of the design on the fabric. So for me, the patterns, uh, but it, it's so hard to overthink it too. You just think, you know, am I doing this the right size? Am I, uh, you know, everything, sashing, borders. Yes. It, you know, you really do start to question yourself. And uh, sometimes for me, what works is to just actually do the designs two or three different ways and then I can put them up on the screen together and say which one do I like the best I would yeah I agree so. with that I think sometimes I overthink the pattern design yeah. or I want to make sure that it's unique to me right uh, but and there are like technical aspects of designing that is like difficult for the fabric part but not not coming up with ideas like Draw, like drawing and stuff isn't isn't hard so that's why I say that's easier yeah and do both of you always send your quilts out to be quilted or do you sometimes quilt them yourself I always send them out I love <laughs> I love our quilters um, they do a fabulous job on them uh, but I'm also so inspired by people that quilt their own I, I will sometimes quilt pillows or really small table runners but everything else I send out and we're just really blessed to have people with, um, in our town that can do small projects for us quickly. Yeah. And also our friends in Las Vegas that uh, can get stuff done. So, Have you done a video or blog post on your scrappy binding? And can you tell people what the smallest sizes you would cut for that? Yeah, and I do have a YouTube video on that. I feel like... I don't like to have them any smaller than in between 9 and 11 inches would be the smallest for me. Uh, and sometimes I'll go, it, the bigger the quilt, the bigger the scrappy strip. So I did okay. a king size quilt and I used a fat quarter. So those pieces were like 22 inches long for that king size quilt. But if it's smaller than a king, I'll usually go in between 12 and 18. Okay. Have you ever done yeah, scrappy nice. binding? I have, and I love it. And that's okay. really funny because one of her binding videos years ago, Billy and her had actually filmed some videos. And I would go to that video all the time just to make sure I wasn't messing up <laughs> and just watch it over and over again. And I made a quilt using Joanna Figueroa's uh, fabrics, and it was her watermelon quilt. It was in a booklet. Oh yes, I remember. And it was so, so, so cute. And I'm like, this needs a scrappy binding. And <laughs> uh, I love scrappy bindings. And yeah, I was doing like, I don't know, like 10, 11 inches for, yeah, like for that. Yeah, for that. Okay. Okay, so I have my very last question. I think it's the best one of the day. If you could have lunch with anybody in the quilt industry, who would it be and what would you ask them? Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, uh, I was thinking, uh, wow. There are so many people, like. Well, we've had some fun lunches yeah, with you. Yeah, we've had fun lunches with you. I was like, I would go to Kimberly. I would say, yeah, I want to go to lunch with you. Like, yeah. Um, oh, my goodness. Let's see. I don't know. Like, I, I feel like, uh, and that's another thing. Like, back when we used to have Quilt Market. Yes. <laughs> yes. We had the, the Moda parties. Those were always so much fun when you had a whole group of designers at a table mm -hmm. uh, yeah and you could just start talking about everything 
uh, I don't know if there's like one person. There's not like one person. Like there's specific people like yeah. that I haven't like. I'm really, I'm always super inspired by Lisa Bonji, and she just opened up her new uh, where, warehouse retreat shop. Think she's just business savvy. Um, I would love to just pick her brain. And I do at market, like that's what's so hard is at market, we're always like talking to each other. Uh, yeah. And I feel like some of the, yeah, a one-on-one, -on -one, Lisa Alexander, uh, I would love to sit down with her. Just, yeah. oh my goodness, Jennifer Keltner. <laughs> there's a lot of people yeah. that uh yeah that's such a great question because we're really missing that you know when we yeah. went to quilt market that's when you know all the moda designers had their booths in a row and when there was nobody there talking to us we could talk to each other and pick each other's brains and just and, get inspired yeah and we really we really did that especially the last day of market sometimes it would be a little bit slower just because you know a lot of people rush in that first day yes. to see the show the first couple days and uh we really would we'd gather chairs and we'd sit down and we would talk business we would talk design we would talk all those yeah. things together and i do miss that like a lot so yeah so sherry you still haven't answered yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, i have an answer Oh, uh, wow. Maybe like, like honestly, like maybe Barbara Brackman, really, just oh, to, yeah. I mean, she is such a wealth of knowledge. So I guess if I were sitting down with her, I could ask anything about any block and she could probably just rattle it off the top of her head. Yeah. Know, oh, that's a great uh, answer. So I'm, I'm just answer. so interested in the history. Yeah. So, yeah. so thank you so much for spending the morning with us. You can find <laughs> Chelsea at chelseastratton.wordpress.com and you can find Sherry at aquiltinglife.com and you can find both of them on the Quilting Life podcast and YouTube channel. And um, I'm going to give a shout out to my super chats from today. We've got Betty Williams. Valeria Bauer and Amy Johnson. So thank you so much. And then for next week, I'm not going to be here because I'm going to be at a dance competition. So next Friday, we will have a, a pre-recorded video. Um, but we, you know, would love for you guys to still watch. And um, thanks so much for joining me. And uh, maybe we can do this again sometime. Yeah. Yes, we would love it. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Really. <laughs>